now it's time to make the scratch belt um, to replace the photo etch uh, plates that are supplied with the kit and we're going to use the turbo carver um, to make these pieces originally I had a tankless compressor which died quite a few years ago and I simply shifted to the shock compressor that I had which was really quite noisy and although it was acceptable to use it during the day at the night my neighbors really complained so to resolve that problem I purchased a new compressor from California Air Tools I had gotten this tank system which had the, a bad compressor and it changed the compressor and now I have this beautiful very quiet um, very quiet machine you can hear I'm talking perfectly all right and the machine is pumping up so not even my wife is going to complain late in the night when I turn this lovely machine on so the first thing we do is we place these these pieces on the scanner and we scan out the parts and then we stuck these um, scan parts onto some juniper and then using the turbo carver started the process as you can see there are lots of different bits um, these tiny little pointy ones are the ones that you're going to probably use most of all but when i was ordering the turbo carver i ordered all sorts of different bits from circular ones um, to these very pointy ones and most of the time at the scale that we're doing these are the two that we're going to use and the biggest challenge is really um, trying to carve a straight line in terms of cleaning up the lines afterwards these miniature files will really help you get nice clean lines uh, but it's just a matter of patience the tool is very easy to use to get this bit out you simply push the back and out it comes and then to put a new bit in you simply put it in the in the jaws and push it in this will give you an idea of what the carved piece looks like um, I have to say not bad for a first attempt um, but clearly <laughs> I have a long way to go and when it's painted this is what it will look like the same thing was done with the eagle and I have to say this one I was most impressed as I didn't think it would come out anywhere as good as this I find that when I'm doing the initial carving, I, I like to hold a big fat piece. Um, so I leave it oversized and then I cut it down on the table saw. And then finally I put it in the thickness sander and sand it down and end up with a piece like this. Now that I'm satisfied with how it's come out, I need to let it take the shape of the boat and so I'll literally soak this piece because it's a very dense piece of juniper I'll soak this piece for at least 24 hours to make sure it's totally saturated um, so that I can bend it on the model the next thing we do is we need to sand the piece down because we're going to stick it and we need to get all of the, the paint off of it so again the Proxon pen sander is very useful for doing this. Uh, once that's done, we'll take the soaked piece and we'll clamp it on. And again, I'll leave it for 24 hours to let it take the shape so that it fits perfectly. So that when I come to, to glue it on, I have a piece that's already bent. And I'm sure you can see the bend in it. 
And we're using this um, tight bond, which gives us lots of working time so we can put the glue on um, and there's no rush to get the piece in place and then leave it for about eight hours before taking the clamps off. I got a wonderful present last week when I went to visit my dentist. Um, I decided I would ask him where he got his birds from and by the time the conversation was finished I had 50 birds from him. Um, these are birds that maybe are slightly rusting on the stem uh, or for whatever reason he no longer used that type. Literally the equivalent of three dentist trips. So next time you go to visit your dentist it's well worth having a little conversation with him about birds for the Tukukawa. She's uh, pressed very nicely onto the boat and the same thing on this side. So we're just going to touch up the black paint and perhaps touch up the gold a little bit. And that's the end of really the last thing we need to put on the hull. All we have left to do then is to complete the rigging on this boat and whereas I put sails, uh, the full sails up on the kit supplied model, on the scratch built I'm going to fold the sails and again that's going to be a first for me as well. So see you in my next video.